Yeah, hi. I was hoping to rent a drum studio to practice. What time? Now. You guys, I've been working my butt off the past week, bringing you these lessons. You see, normally I'm a drum teacher of sorts, but I think I've earned the right to nice that out for a video or two. In fact, that's better. Anyway, I want to talk to you about a fun topic this summer. As people are going back to gigging. What up? I have a gig. First gig in a year. Maybe you're going on tour. Or maybe you're just traveling to see family or friends because you haven't seen them for a couple years. And just for fun, I'm gonna take you on my first trip outside of New York City since March 2020 and actually show you what I do. Because sometimes when you travel, even for tour, the practice schedule falls by the wayside. Can't be bothered finding a spot to shed. But even more than that, it's just tough to keep up the same routine you had when you were at home. When you're on the road. When maybe you'll have 25 minutes here, a half hour there. And if anybody should know about practicing on the road, it's me. I'm crazy. Thanks. So today, my top tips for practicing on the road without losing your edge. Stay tuned. I travel and sorry I just got to go off script here I mean for an entire year we couldn't travel can we acknowledge how amazing it is and how much we took it for granted right off. okay back to the script anyway when I travel I'm not trying to spend all afternoon in the practice room I've got things to do people to see and it's probably the same for you if you're on tour you've already got your sound checks your performances when you have a day off you want to go places see things all of which means we need to do more in less time but that short time is also an opportunity to focus on something deeply. In your normal routine, you maybe spend 45 minutes warming up and the 25 minutes playing coordination exercises. Then maybe some time playing along to recordings. But what if you've only got 30 minutes total? Well, I'll challenge you. What if you had to work on only one thing? For me lately, it's been continuous 16th hat groups. I'll start and I'll either play a single loop continuously for 30 minutes, or I'll do something like what I call the looping exercise, where I play one loop for something like five to 10 minutes, then move on to the next loop without stopping. A few things happen when you do this. First, you strengthen your patience and focus. You'll probably feel like abandoning the exercise, but I encourage you to set a timer and keep going. But you'll also start to hear and feel in four dimensions. It doesn't have to be groove, by the way. It could be a coordination thing, or a time thing, or an improv thing. In fact, let's talk about how you decide what to practice. Tip number two, record yourself before you go. As I was saying, how do you know what to practice? Because traveling is also a natural way for us to break out of ruts. By necessity, if you've got a long travel day or a busy social or concert schedule, you're probably gonna have a forced day off or two, which lets you start again with fresh eyes and ears. So it's actually a golden opportunity to do something you wouldn't normally do. And the best way to make sure that resets answering to some real need in your playing, record yourself. You'll probably hear something that surprises you, something you thought you were doing better. When you do, that's your signal. Use your trip to work on that. For me, it continues to be rushing and dragging and playing not so clean on those straight eighth and 16th note grooves. And getting my eights more consistent when I'm playing swing with jazz. So every odd numbered practice session, I'm gonna do only the straight eight funky drummer stuff. For at least 30 minutes. 
If I have more time, I might diversify. Every even numbered practice session, I'm gonna practice basic swung hand and foot combos and record myself at the end of every session. When it comes to tours, two schools of thought. Some people like to practice what they're playing every night. Others figure they're getting enough reps on stage and they want to use their limited practice time to practice something different. I think you can split the difference. Use your gigs as a compass for what you need to work on, but then try to find the underlying thing to work on. Not just a beat or song from the gig. But if you're not on tour, and even if you are, recording yourself is still going to be the best way to find something upstream of the issues you're having that's out of the box and unorthodox compared to what you usually work on. Tip three, schedule your practice time before anything else. Think about it. You're gonna have shows if you're touring, social obligations, stuff you wanna do and see. Your schedule is gonna fill up fast. If you don't hold time for practice, it's gonna get swallowed up. But that's actually not what I do in real life. What I do in real life is a varsity move I like to call, leave it till the absolute last minute. And I don't recommend this for beginners. I was hoping to rent a drum studio to practice. Now, but if you've got that David Goggins kind of neurosis, you might want to think about actually leaving it to the last minute, and here's why. When you're traveling, whether you're on a day off or whether you're on vacation, there's a certain je ne sais quoi when you don't have anything scheduled, anything hanging over your head. It's a totally different feeling from having to get back from the mountains to the city or from a museum to a practice studio by a certain time or you're gonna lose it. Plus, if you're anything like me, your family and friends probably wanna know they're the first priority. So because I'm frankly neurotic about getting the practice in, I can trust that OCD gene to coax me toward the practice room even if it's the absolute last minute. Wait till I've done practically everything else I wanted to do during the day, match the family beat for beat, tired them out, they're napping, it's the afternoon, then, make the call. But if you're more of a novice, I do recommend the schedule it in advance thing. So knowing where to go is some portion planning ahead, some portion serendipity. When I shot the scene you're watching now, I was in Portland. And we'll get to that amazing kit, don't worry. Anyway, Portland is kind of a special case. Rhythm trainer, not gonna help you. Yeah, hi, I was interested in potentially renting a studio to practice the drums. Unfortunately, we don't rent out any studios, any studio space. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. In most medium to large American cities, you'll find practice space relatively easily. In LA, I like to practice at Bedrock. Or sometimes in West LA music studios. When I was in Austin last, I practiced wherever this is. Even overseas, I never had much trouble finding practice studios. But as the folks at the Revival Drum Shop told me, in Portland, rented temporary studio space isn't really a thing. In fact, here I am at Revival. As you can see, it's a teaching studio. So it's, even Revival isn't set up for, you know what I mean. But after a bunch of calling, at least I got some time there. Which brings us to tip five, be adaptable. Having this little channel has its perks. Before this latest trip, I put out the bat signal on the old 8020 community page, asking people where they'd recommend I practice. A bunch of people recommended Revival, which ended up working out in the end. Revival Drum Shop? Yeah, hi. I was hoping to rent a drum studio to practice. I called earlier in the week. Okay, uh, what time? Now. So take the W on that, 8020 Nation. But for those other days when Revival wasn't open, I would have been out of luck, were it not for this guy. Hey guys, I'm here with Cody. Just wanted to introduce him. And his amazing kit. How many days does it take you to play all of these cymbals once? <laughs> like, would you say you hit them all, all at least once every practice session? I hit a lot, yeah. If I'm not hitting them, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna pare down a few. And when he offered this spot to me, I had no idea what I'd find. But I was like, you know what? I'll go and shed. I'll meet a channel viewer. And yeah, the kit exceeded expectations.
If you're hearing better than usual audio on this, that's because Cody has a professional mic set up and he ran audio for it. I've also accepted offers to practice at people's homes in multiple places. Austin. Sorry, I don't have footage of that one. Hong Kong. Same deal, no footage. Even my hometown after my parents sold my kit. Until I bought the dirt cheapest student pearl kit I could find on eBay. If you're on tour, and or if you know people where you're going, put it out on the airwaves. You may be surprised, in a good way, about who you meet. And you'll definitely get to practice on some interesting kits. Anyway, in this video we delved a little bit into what to practice, how to structure your practice, how especially to practice in a short amount of time, maybe when you don't have a bunch of days to string together, you're just catching a one-off, 30 minutes here or there. If you enjoyed that stuff and you want to delve deeper into how to construct an adaptive practice routine that will actually get you to your goals, I recommend my course, The Practice Course, which teaches you how to create your own practice routines that will break you out of the rut, will save you time, and will be adaptive to your real goals so you'll really see the stuff you're shedding come out in your real life playing, which is more than I can say for my practice routines for years and years and years. Anyway, we only open that course up a couple times a year. We only open it up to people on my exclusive mailing list. To get on said mailing list, you have only to click the link below this player, enter your email address on the next page. And as a free bonus gift for doing that, I'm gonna send you three free videos. It's my three video mini course, make you better in the next three weeks than you've gotten in the previous six months. You know the pitch. Dudes, see you soon. It's been real. 80-20. Cody very generously uh, donated his uh, his drum room and his entire drum kit uh, to me this afternoon to practice. Uh, so yeah, amazing amazing drum kit. Really appreciate it. How long did it take you to put this whole thing together? It's amazing. I think that it kind of uh, evolved over probably a, about a year and a half. A year and a half? I thought you were going to say like three decades. I had had a very small like electronic kit for years mm -hmm. from like apartment living and small house living and just wanted to get back to acoustic drums and then I got the idea to put two back to back and then got a little bit out of control with the cymbals for a while but uh, everyone who grew up when I grew up kind of wanted to have Terry Bozio's kit. So. Oh yeah. So you said, you said you actually recorded an album using something like this setup, right? This setup, yeah. Like we, were, yeah, we. You did. did the tracking in this room. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, not having to move it. Yeah, that, that could never move. I don't think. But. Cool, amazing. Uh, what's the name of your band, by the way? So it's Cody Weathers and the Men Your Mama Warned You About, and so our album is uh, called Red Rocket slash This Broken Heap. It's two albums that came out simultaneously this past year. And cool. It's on Spotify and YouTube Music everywhere. So the best place for people to find you would be YouTube. Probably. Yeah, that's that's a good spot. Cody just, Weathers and the men your mama warned you about. Yeah, but you can just look for Cody Weathers on YouTube. It's just Cody Weathers on YouTube. So like Cody like Wyoming Weathers, like the weather outside with an S on the end. Amazing. Thanks again. It was great listening to you practice. I have a lot of work to do. I can, I can tell. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do. Thank you. <laughs>